Hello, I'm Kirsty Gallagher. Welcome to Talking with Titans. As part of Team Kinetica, I said I'd host this episode with my very good friends Nal Horan and Mark McDonald of Modest Golf. So I do hope you enjoy it. We're just going to have a chat, really. Basically. Go on, Ned. Yeah. We've got the answers to any question. Go on, Mark. So, Niall, Mark, welcome. How are you guys? And how's lockdown been for you? Go on, Mark. Tell her. Yeah, uh, Kirsty, <laughs> thanks. It's it's been uh, it's been interesting. You know, the, the last twelve months has been crazy for everybody, right? Um, we've been you know really fortunate, and uh, Modest has been keeping us really busy, and um, we've had uh, we've enjoyed some really standout moments. We're obviously Tyrrell winning, and uh, lots going on behind the scenes. So. Yeah, obviously, very difficult time for so many people, but mm. for, for us, we've been we've been very fortunate. Mm. And now for you, I mean, we'll talk about modest in the minute uh, and the success that you are uh, enjoying. Um, how's lockdown been for you, Niall? I mean, it's obviously been very frustrating for you not being able to to tour or or, or to to, mm. to do a lot, really. Yeah, we had you know, I obviously would have been touring last year, so that kind of fell through, but. Listen, there's bigger things going on in the world, so I had to kind of take that as, as I went. Um, but listen, we, the music didn't happen last year, but it did give me a chance to sit in that piano over there and do a bit of writing and kind of get the next thing started. And as Mark said, Modest Golf definitely kept us busy, you know, if, if for for a year where um, where things were so mental, we were lucky to be have kept busy. And let's just talk more about Modest. Let's go right back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. How? We, how did it all happen? How did it how, how did it come together? It was just a conversation I had with uh, Richard uh, Griffiths and Harry McGee, who own Modest Management, my my music management, and I just basically said, "Do you reckon we could start like a like a sports um, a sports end of Modest, and you know we could we could run it and own it?" We felt like we had the right set up there, and then mm. then we just needed finished mm. article in Macket to, to take it take it <laughs> off the ground. Uh, Here I, it that's is. actually. Kirstie, that's actually the story we tell people. The real story is for five years previously, I annoyed Niall. <laughs> you did, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to somehow be involved in his music because I wanted to be in a boy band all my life. <laughs> and I think he just thought, we've, <laughs> we've got to give this boy a job coming so you stop wrecking my head. So that's the actual real story. <laughs> I, I, I still to this day remember exactly where I was when I received the phone call. I just knew it was a really unique project and mm. I just know that Niall and the Modest Management team would never do something half-hearted yeah. so I knew we would have big plans and and they would sort of back up what they said they wanted to the vision they had. And obviously Niall you, you're quite hands-on with the company aren't you it's not just like you know okay let's set this up and get a few golfers involved I mean how just explain how involved you are with Modest Golf as yeah. much as I can on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, obviously, in the last year, I've had a lot more time to, to be involved on the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, yeah, I think that was the thing. You know, I wasn't going to just set it up and then just walk yeah. away. You know, then you're just another celebrity setting up a company. And <laughs> I have a love for golf and feel that I could we can help a lot of these young guys and girls coming through. So I just I wanted if I was going to do something, I was going to do it properly. Mm. And I always get asked, you know, when I go to first meetings with people is is Niall actually really involved and I always say every single email I send Niall is copied in you know we were building the business during Niall's first album mm -hmm. you know so and he still had as much involvement he attended uh, our first ever meeting with Guido Migliozzi who we That's signed right. when we when we signed Leona Maguire Niall somehow found time in his diary to come and we actually went to Duke University to sit in front of the coaches and the owner and, and her team. You know, as a new company, you come you come onto the scene to entice sportsmen or women to your setup. It's quite difficult, isn't it? But what are the key ingredients that make it work, do you think, uh, your company? When we first started, it was very hard. I guess our point of difference was kind of that the, the company was already there. Yeah. We just needed the per we just needed the personnel. We were having a conversation with them. We told them the truth. You know, this is where we're at. We would love to get to this place we have this you know it was kind of it was just facts really yeah for me Niall's directive from the start and I know this sounds really simple is just if we say we're going to do something we're going to do it yeah you know there are many good management companies out there and they've all got their own unique selling points we just Niall was always very passionate about if if, if we say we're going to do it if we say we're going to get them starts we yeah. say we're going to get them sponsorship we will do that let's talk about Tyrrell Hatton Obviously, we, we knew of Tyrrell before, 
But then he came on board with you guys and he has just flourished. He has blossomed into this incredible golfer. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. We just got on really well with Terrell straight away. We were like it's we just had a really good laugh with him. That you know, he did he a dodgy wrist in all of 2019 effectively and got got a um, got his surgery done and then after that once he did his rehab and really focused uh, again he just kicked on and when he won Arnold Palmer it felt like he couldn't stop him you know he's won four times in the last yeah. 16 months and um it just shows you it's the same with all of these golfers if you can get like um a lot of their off course stuff sorted for them they can have a clearer mind and they can go and play the golf that they really want to absolutely um and yeah. Terrell's, pro Terrell's proven that he just he walks around with a smile on his face. As we know, he, he he can get frustrated and blow the lid sometimes, but that's part of the character. <laughs> that's his selling point. You know, when I when I'm in the States now and people talk to me about uh you know who do who do you manage, Terrell Hatton, they're like, Oh, he's really funny oh. and he's just a great guy and he works really hard. And when you're in that circle and you see the hard work that goes on, the team mm. in place, his trainers, his nutritionists, his you know, the, our, our team, you know, yeah. how, how it all works, how much of a support network his fiance is. It's just that, and you see it come to fruition, it's, bit, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 Till is that golfer who can appeal to, to everybody. And I think now with some of the content the European Tour has shared and what have you, people are really starting to see he's actually just a, a guy who's super hard on himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think as well for, for us, you know, it's important to note that we play a very small part in, in his success. You know, before we signed Tyrrell, he was a multiple European Tour winner. He'd, yeah. not, he'd, he'd, he'd been in a winning Ryder Cup team and what have you. He was already an mm. established uh, golfer and he had the, the pick of anybody. The success he's enjoyed since being with Modest is, is, is down to the fact He's so hardworking. He's so committed, and yeah. he'll 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 do everything he can to achieve. Let's talk about the ISBS Handa World Invitational, <laughs> which was obviously meant to happen last year. Um, this is a tournament in which men and women will play. Tell us tell us more about this tournament. Why that's so important to you? We're, we're excited about about the event. It's completely unique with it being LPGA and European Tour, um, yeah. with a prize fund of just over two million dollars. Um, I think, you know, Niall does deserve a lot of credit for where the event's got to. Um, it, it, it started four years ago as a challenge tour event. Niall attended the event and he really promoted it on, on social media. And it's a challenge tour event, so the guys aren't maybe household names yet, but they are young, next generation superstars. And Niall really communicated that message. And we got about 40,000 people through the gates that week mm. for a challenge tour event. It, it broke a record. But I think that really sort of started to get people's attentions and, and Keith Pelley and, and the LPGA have been so supportive of getting this done in a in a world right now where events are so hard to get off the ground with, with what's going on. Equality and inclusivity are two huge things and we've always yeah. we've always talked about that. It was just how do we get it off the ground? Luckily enough, with the conversations that we had with European Tour and LPGA and et cetera, et cetera, were great conversations and people really understood what we were trying to do. Yeah. If you can have all of these ideas, but if you've got no governing bodies or anything like that to back it, they'll never happen. Like I've always, I like, I've always thought like, if I can get one or 2% of my, my followers online to, to play, which would, a lot of it would be female as we know. Like, I think that's a game changer. If you can get women into golf, the, the game will grow as, big as possible and or as big as it can and it's just it's an exciting prospect it's just trying to you know move the needle on that and that'll take time but yeah we're for the long run and of course you know all about sort of the, the the female golfers and and the battle they've had really especially in europe and you know in america it is quite a different mm -hmm. quite a different game isn't it mm. quite frankly leona mcguire who you look after you must be enjoying watching her success her development are you no it's incredible we we always knew about leona i knew about her since i was a child because her and her sister were on tv in ireland at a very young age then they then they went to america leona started to dominate and she was the number one amateur in and wow. to be to be number one amateur in the world at that level is just mind-blowing yes. when okay. you meet when you yeah. meet her you understand like she is the most dedicated golf nerd that's what she is um, <laughs> yeah. that, like, that's why you, that's why you two get on so well yeah that, that's that's why i get on her. <laughs> yeah. i wish i had her game but um yeah. you know, and, you, and you can fit you can feel that the minute you meet her she's just so impressive yeah. you know we had sponsors coming knocking on the door for her. it was it was it was really like oh 
oh, we've got we've got, we've yeah. got big fish here. Really? And, you know, for me, for us to sign, you know, the number yeah. one female amateur um, as a as a business who celebrates equality and inclusivity, for us was equally as big as a till moment or our first ever win. If you look every year, she gets better and better and better, and I think we'll see that over the over the coming years. Mm. I want to talk quickly about Brendan Lawler, who again. I mean, it has and is developing into quite an athlete. Congratulations on his recent success, sponsorship. Um, you must be like thrilled with with what he's achieving at the moment. Yeah, Brendan's brilliant. And Mark introduced me to Brendan a while, like a few years ago, and I was just mind blown the minute you meet him. He's just his his disability is there, but he doesn't pander to it at all. He's just he's, he's in a different headspace. It doesn't let him. It doesn't hold him back at all. Um, and when you see the guy melt a golf ball, you'll understand why he can play golf yeah. like the best of them. And he's just such a down to earth, again, really hard working guy, and really wants to become successful himself, but really promote, you know, disabled golf as it is, you know, and get it yeah. out. There. He's just such an impressive guy. I mean, you've yeah. got a guy who's who's lived with a disabil disability all his life. He said, you know, how when people say, oh, how how do you cope? You know, he says, "Well, I don't, I don't feel I'm any different. I'm not different. You know, we've all got different things in our in our life which are challenges, and and that's just who I am. And yes. that really made us think. You know, it's very easy to get sucked into complaining about life, or you know, when we're all quite fortunate and privileged. So mm. but for me, he's 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 done more for for us and taught us more than we can ever ever teach him. Mm. He's, he is truly inspiring. Um, let's talk about Kinetica, obviously, who I'm a very proud ambassador for. Um, yeah. How did that relationship come about with you guys? How did that occur? Yeah, I, I think, um, for it, you know, our stars kind of aligned, you know, to have a global business who are from Ireland. I, the Irish market is so important to us because obviously that's Niall's roots. I, yeah. claim, to be, I claim to be half Irish. Uh, we've got an <laughs> event out there. So, um, you know, for us to have a nutrition partner in Connecticut who are so impressive. I think the key word for me with Connecticut is education. They're mm. not a company who just want to to force product on on people. They want to educate you on how you can implement uh, protein yep. supplement mm. into your everyday life to, to to be healthier, to improve your well being. Mm. They're a very sort of impressive company who mm. invest a lot of time and, and money in yeah. the the research process in order to for it to resonate with in everyone whether it be you me your guy next door or your you know till till loves the product as well and he's one of the best in his his industry as you said it's about education but knowledge and how important it is to for athletes to have uh, um to have good nutrition to to follow a plan and and that works brilliantly with you guys with the agency that you're running doesn't it i mean you you are you said a line that that is the word really isn't it now yeah, hundred percent. It, it it really does work well with us, you know. As as we mentioned at the start, they're Irish first of all, which is a great thing, and that's that's how it, it was. The Leona partnership is is how we, it all kind of stars aligned together. Yeah, um, yeah. And how that came, and then yeah, we, we become very close partners. And and Barry, the guy running the show there, is is has been a great partner to us. And um, yeah, it's just kind of all fell into place at the right time for us. And it's great that we have a nutritional partner alongside all the other stuff we're doing. They, they've been a real game changer for us and they're someone mm -hmm. obviously we're extremely proud of it. They're, they're going to be associated with the the World Invitational. Um, but as I say, to have, a, have a, a global giant like them, but based in in our hometown of, of Ireland <laughs> is, is something which... Uh, Get out of here. Get out of here. We're very proud of. I have to say that, uh, and just quickly, I have a slight obsession with the protein bars. I don't yeah, know if you guys do. Did yeah. you see... Oh my um, God. Yeah, Tyrrell, uh, Tyrrell got caught on Sky Sports referring to it, it tasted as nice as a as a lion bar. And, uh, Me too! Yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't want to say that. I'm so glad you said it. It's like a yeah. lion bar. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. Uh, other, I mean, other, chocolate, uh, other chocolate bars are available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank so, you Kirsty. so much for giving up your time, for coming on today as part of Team Connecticut. Um, no, thank you so much. And Mark, I mean, I am really giggling about the boy band thing. I mean, it's really, <laughs> this is just Kirsty, kept me going. Kirsty, I mean, there I is still, well enough already. There is still time. Noel's got a big black book of people in the music biz. Watch this space. We might be coming back next year and I'll have some news for you. 
<laughs> okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kirsten. Cheers, guys.